This is Moonshine and Music with Joe Shelton. Wait a minute, that's me. Anyway, we're going to bring you some inspiring songwriters, musicians, and maybe some side challenges and other stuff around the music industry. So stick with us right now, because the show is coming your way. Woo! Woo! Moonshine and Music starts right now. All right, welcome to Moonshine and Music Review. It's going to be wild today. We are reviewing But Seriously Folk, the album by the master himself, Chris Wolf. (laughs) But but Seriously Folk. Uh, And our guests of reviewers today are the ever popular Siege Ramshackle. Say hi, Siege. Hey, man, I'm popular. Good to know. How you doing, baby? (laughs) <laughs> and bailey shelton of space jam Hi. fame uh less less popular but at least a little bit more famous <laughs> and brent schlimmer oh, brent. From music 30 oh. cool his logo on today i know i got fancy today i'm trying to get my name centered properly <laughs> Look. just so we know who you are in case Dude, we there you go that well, who, I who, I had who, the who invited the lorax to the meeting <laughs> that that guy i don't know which way he's he's that guy on my screen and that's how we became the brady bunch <laughs> <laughs> so um on, on the review uh our um our album review today is uh chris wolf is a uh one of one of my really good friends and uh so i'm not gonna let that uh stop me from criticizing this record which I'll just say it out front. We don't have to get to the end. I'm not going to criticize this record much. It's awesome. <laughs> um, the, uh, if you haven't listened to it, like stop and go listen to it. Fuck that. Don't listen to us because this is this record's crazy good. Um, yeah, Chris Wolf's a master. <laughs> so it's just going to be fun talking about it. Um, so uh, if you guys haven't seen Chris Wolf before, and his his tagline is. Um, <laughs> Chris Wolf, never heard of him. And uh, so if you haven't heard of him, you're not alone. Um, but uh, the album is, uh, when, it, when it has a serious moment, it actually shocks you because it's mostly um, comedy uh, at its finest, uh, written yeah. to really fantastic folk music. Um, I did uh, get the list of players on this record so that we could talk about them just up front. Um, uh, the, the record was produced by Chris Wolf and John Gilmore. John Gilmore, who made the best folk album of last year, bar none. Um, and uh, if you haven't found that, go find John Gilmore and his record. But he plays on the record. He plays uh, multiple instruments on, uh, I, like, the, the guitar, um, the resonating guitar. And he also did the em- engineering. And then... Um, Rod Schindler plays drums, accordion, drums and accordion. Aaron Ransdale plays bass. Doug Souter um, plays some guitars on this record. Linda Gilmore and Kara Jean Wallers play. And that's no uh, joke, man. Drum accordions are hard to play. Right. You hit one side of them and they shoot across the room. (laughs) (laughs) Background vocals, Melinda Gilmore and Kara Jean Wallers. And D-Rock on trumpet is killer. So. um, Oh, that was D-Rock? That was D-Rock, yeah. Yeah, cool. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> so, so, yeah, a lot of players there and uh, uh, fantastic players on the record. So, um, you guys, uh, we usually do this. We go track by track. So, let's uh, start off with the first one. This is called <laughs> Poop on the Moon. So let me share the favorite. screen so people can see this stuff here. Uh and hear it t minus 10 9 8 so serious 7, 6 5 4 3 2 1 we have the stars sparkle and shine in the sky tonight and if you see them with the one you love 
everything's all right. Venus twinkles like a diamond in the Milky Way. Moon is full, shining bright. Then she hears you say, Poop on the moon. And I don't mean to be rude. Poop on the moon. And I know it kills the mood. But there's poop on the moon. Poop on the moon. Only 12 men set foot in the lunar dust. And after they were there a while, they did just what they must. Maximum absorbency. Garments is what they wore. Here on Earth, we call them diapers. You know what they're for. Poop on the moon. So uh, that's a little uh, <laughs> bit of poop on the moon. Best, best harmony awesome. use of the word poop ever, by the way. Prettiest poop harmony vocal of all time. <laughs> poop, 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 poop. I like how poop, dad poop, played like poop, half poop. of the song. He was like, I just want to keep hearing it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's so well done that it makes it even better and funnier. Like those guys uh, in the background vocals are just yeah. perfect. Yeah, it's got like a doo wop vibe. Yeah. Is that the, yeah. Thanks, Seed. Or sorry, sure. like, Smeech Ram Shitter. Smeech Ram Shitter is my name today. Yeah. <laughs> Smeech. I, I will always affirm your existence, Bailey. Thanks. But remember, my mission today is to mock you mercilessly. So. Can't wait. <laughs> okay. So how do we do this? I've never zoomed. Who goes first? Is it like a playground rule? Like we beat each other up or something? Yeah, you go first. Go. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, so what I kind of did, I, I got notes, by the way, man, because Chris Wolf, you know, deserves it. Uh, so I kind of did it in stages. So like what I have for this one, uh, the guitar on poop is really masterful, like for such a comedic song. And that's why Chris Wolf is so dope, right? It's, it kind of like harkens back or harkens back to like the World War II songs like Barney Google or, you know, Yes, We Have No Bananas and shit. And, you know, the old traditions of like Garrison, you know, the Prairie Home Companion kind of comedy or like even Bob Tom kind of whatever. It's it's that comedy that's really based around this really masterful crafting. And so the thing about this track that really got me is the guitar could be a pop song. Like it could be a radio hit, that, that mood. Uh, and only a really, really good guy, you know, true artist could make such a crude, scatological kind of childish song, you know, be good like that and that's what chris does you know he uses childishness as kind of like a way to make the listener remember the innocence of youth while at the same time like like anybody else that made a poop joke joke like if i made a poop joke everybody'd be like wow poop joke right but, but he, he does it with an absurdity and then like the last thing and i'll shut up on this one is for each track i did my favorite lyric because at the end of the day chris wolf's like a like a wordsmith right he's so good with it so my favorite one in this track is for weight distribution they left poop on the moon <laughs> that's a good that's a good lyric brent slammer come on it's true it's true that's what chris I, wolf is great at that's i you're, you're absolutely right having those kind of like dude the, there's a chord change in there that makes you immediately go what yeah there's that two seven in there somewhere like you don't you don't expect it coming and i i've always thought that about seeing him live is that you find that uh you find exactly that in his playing it's like what on the surface looks like a dude with what appears to be a barely rudimentary understanding of what kind of chord structure he's using then all of a sudden there's that Oh wait, no, he does exactly what he's doing. Yeah. Like, yeah, and that's and that not not to jump in on you there, but that's that radio connection I'm talking about. You know, like the Prairie Home Companion people. They I mean, these were musicians that traveled the world. You know, they did the ragtime right. stuff and and all of that. And it was serious music. And they were so good they could just make it funny. I mean, they could just throw out a brilliant song and be like, it's poop on the moon. Yep. Yeah. Yep. There you go. And every so week. Yeah, so about every halfway. Week, yeah. Right, every single week, the Prairie Home Companion yeah. guys would like, they wrote a show that week. 
Uh, so about halfway through that, I Googled the word scatological, and I'm really surprised at how accurate it is. Uh, the official definition relating to or characterized by an interest in excrement or excretion. I'm a smart human being, Bailey Sheldon. What just, are you trying to find? Yeah, <laughs> I'm just, you just pulled it out of your ass, not, uh, you know, so to speak. And just like, oh, ah, yeah, scatological. <laughs> like, I, you didn't even look at your notes. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, the, the notes are actually in Japanese. I, I was channeling some some daimon. What is uh, scatological <laughs> in Japanese? <laughs> that feels vaguely raci racist. What did English? It? I don't know. Um, <laughs> what so was like? Oh, I was going to say uh, Chris Wolf's comedy style kind of reminds me of like Haywood Banks, um, which is, mm. it, you know, very similarly like. The lines, are, like, the music is kind of a separate part to the comedy, and the comedy comes from not necessarily a more simple way, but, like, very much, um, <laughs> even though it's about poop, it's still wholesome. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, it comes okay. from a very, like, straightforward, like, this is funny because it's ridiculous uh, kind of humor. <laughs> right, yeah, well, he could have that, easily, it could have just as easily been shit on the moon. I mean, you know, let's face it. Yeah. You know, and it, it wouldn't have been, that wouldn't have been nearly as funny, you know. It's just like okay, <laughs> mm -hmm. choose your choose your verbiage accordingly. Yeah, well, you're right. poop and moon yeah. kind of have like mirroring vowel right. sounds, so I think it was also from a lyrical standpoint probably better to say poop on the yeah. moon than shit on the moon. Well, and that's that big point about the innocence that Chris Wolf really conveys. And I, I keep coming back to it because it's this 1950s kind of vibe of America where you can just laugh about poop. You know, like it's it's like playground, but it's deeper than that, you know, and it's it's such an innocence. Um, but but later on in the album, obviously, he, he hits on some really, you know, ripe topics. So it's not all that way, but he approaches it in a way that's distinctly American. And um, I like that very much about it. I, my, you know, you were talking about your favorite lyrics in this song, and I love the whole section where he outlines uh, the different uh, people from Apollo 11. You know, Neil Armstrong did this and Buzz Aldrin, and he has this whole little piece about Aldrin. And that, <laughs> that makes me laugh because he just, he just called out, like, some of the most famous men in history, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> As having taken a shat on the moon <laughs> well, everybody poops man everybody poops <laughs> there's books about it yeah do you ever see the video where buzz aldrin punches that reporter in the face by the way it's super cool <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yep. yeah. <laughs> budge buzz aldrin kicks ass <laughs> dude was like you fake the moon landing and buzz aldrin was like you're not a man whack him <laughs> <laughs> Not to uh, uh, condone violence or anything, but that was a good use of it right there. <laughs> Dude, we didn't get to the moon without violence, man. What's a rocket explosion? It's like violence to its pinnacle. It's like we, we got to the moon by literally putting fire on the asses of people and shooting them through the atmosphere. Violence <laughs> solves everything. Well, let's move <laughs> I'm watching on to track two now. here. Um, let's see what we got. It's called Crying Train. One, two. Windows roll down in my Oldsmobile. Funny how that train whistle makes me feel. It's rolling down the tracks. Someplace new, and the sky spills shades of red and gray while the sun goes down to close the day. I wonder if that old train's trying to tell me what to do. Cause this sleepy old town, it can get me down, make my soul wanna roam. All right, so that's a little crying train. Now everybody needs a song about a train, right, Joe? Every folk album has to have a song about a train. <laughs> are, are we going to keep the same order again? I don't Zoom. Uh -huh. I, like, I don't, I don't can go first. Go, Bailey. 
give you more material to make fun of me. Um, uh, I really like the walking bass line that goes through this song. I think that's the right thing to call it. <laughs> he clapped. Okay, we're good. Uh, <laughs> oh my God. Okay, we got to pause for a second because an ad just started playing because I was watching the video of uh, Buzz Aldrin Form. punching a reporter. Um, oh. all right, now that that's fixed, <laughs> uh, secondarily, um, just the, I think it's partially, partially the imagery and partially the like talky vocals, but it really reminded me of the toy story theme, uh, music, um, especially that line where he's like, this old train's getting me down or whatever. Uh, it's really similar to like the, the, you got a friend in me talky. Yeah. What's, what's songwriter's name that does all those, uh, movie soundtracks? Yeah. Randy yeah, Newman. Yeah, yeah, Randy Newman, right? Not Gary Newman, Randy Newman. <laughs> yeah. I, I thought I said Randy. Did I say yeah, Gar I yeah, said Gary? Oh. Gary's another new there's another dude named Gary Newman. That was the here in my car, like in something and the yeah. in cars down out. That's Gary Newman. And then oh, there's Paul Randy Newman who makes salad dressing. Uh, and plays pools, right? Yeah. yeah. And races cars. <laughs> I no longer know what we're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> what, well, what else did you have, Bailey? That was it. Those were my main points. We blazed through them. <laughs> All right, Brent. I think that uh, I think that Chris always has, has struck me as like the Tom Waits for grown-up little kids, <laughs> or for children at heart. You know, like Tom Waits is pretty intense always, <laughs> and Chris has got that. <laughs> We don't have to mess around with that intensity, you know. It's like now they're not that he doesn't have some, like I said, not that he doesn't have some poignant songs as well, but they're never quite as his voice just always immediately reminds me of at least one Tom Waits thing. It's and it's just the gravelly, grumpy old guy voice that some of us have and some of us don't. I think he could sing about anything with that little bass line behind it, Brent, and you'd be all over it. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I'm glad to hear, like, I didn't know who was on the album, and I was, it's like, oh, shit, I do know a bunch of those guys. <laughs> yeah. Doug Sauter is one of my favorite guitar players in indie. He's, you know, he's like a, you can only find him on, like, uh, Instagram, but he's always, it's always like, hey, here's a little video clip of me playing mandolin at three o'clock in the morning because I woke up and couldn't go back to sleep whatnot so yeah he he's just a great player he's played with everybody that i know and that sounds like sounds like he just got like what are they called uh midwest rhythm exchange that's the band aaron ransdahl and doug Sauter. i think that's what they did it's like oh hey we'll just be your band i think that's awesome pull a whole you know pull a whole band worth of dudes and go want to be on my album okay cool <laughs> <laughs> well, again, I got a feeling that Chris probably hangs with those dudes too. I mean, there, there's a there's a real synergy there with the old timey, you know, thing. So, yeah, uh, Chris and John Gilmore are real good friends. So I'm sure that that's you know part of it. Well, and I know that Doug and those guys played on on John's album. On John's album too. Yeah. Yeah. It may have all been done at the same time. You know, it's like, hey, can we throw down a track for Chris <laughs> while we're here? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> why not so, so, John Gilmore's uh, album by the way was called Gravity's Curse I keep trying to remember it but I, I've got it and uh, and that, that was a great album as well um, but it, it's a it's a way more serious it's not it's not funny folk it's just straight up folk probably the purest folk album I've I've come across in recent memory and um, and the, these guys that are the players uh, on this record are you know like some of those same guys and it really makes this shine i i'm like in in this particular track here it's just the subtleties of things coming up around that bass line uh -huh. um, that, it, that they cut they come playing in especially if you have like you know it turned up or you've got it on headphones or something where you can hear oh what's that going on in my left ear over there what what are they <laughs> you know uh, there's all there's a, something to find in the music on the on this on every track well, it, it's super cool because the first thing I had down was that upright bass and we all dialed in on it. I mean, so, I mean, that's really something special and it's not even just the performance, but the, the actual sound of it, the way he, I mean, it's, and that's that old timey jazzy 
back porch kind of thing that Chris Wolf does so well. And the other thing about his songs is, is like every song is like a familiar friend. You know, he's doing so much different musically, but that guitar is always there in that voice. And I'll throw out Leonard Cohen, you know, so we got Tom Waits, we got Leonard Cohen, we've got Newman. And these are all these these wordsmiths that craft these great kind of old timey American uh, masterpieces. So that's not bad company. Not at all. Let's move on to track three um, here on But Seriously Folk. When I was a kid. Never was popular when I was a kid. Never had a whole lot of friends, but I found out being a kid ain't where the story ends. Some of them kids thought they knew it all. They never had a clue. I wonder if they look back at the things that they did. I bet they never do. So that's uh, when I was a kid. What do you guys think? Well, it's again, nailing the old timey, I think. You know, I agree. obviously the players that he's got on this, that's that's the shtick, I guess, going on right here. It's like, oh, if you take Chris at face value in his usual, like, live scenario, it doesn't come off like that at all, really, to me. You know, it's like, okay, there's a certain – thing that happens when you put that particular instrumentation together it's like we were just talking about you know that kind of bass tone that kind of mandolin tone there's different you know there's different ways those instruments can sound but in this case it's it just really adds to what chris already does like i said if you go see him live you're going to see just chris picking a guitar and it, it doesn't have that same feel you know like i I don't want to say I was surprised to hear it that way, but it was, it was a nice surprise to hear it that way. It's like, Oh, okay. It, he's going to let go of, it's not just him playing his usual thing over the backing band. They rearranged that to the point where it's like, Oh, that's, he didn't just go in and record the song solo. And then the band filled in around it. He, you know, it was part of like, Oh, I'm not going to play my usual guitar part on this. Like, this song sounds to me it's like oh that's that's all mandolin and look you know upright bass and all the stuff and it doesn't have his usual like little claw hammery finger you know right hand technique that he plays live so yeah i i always i'll give heavy props for that i think on this particular song it brings so much more emotion into it like um the uh you know the the nostalgia of this song really gets brought forth by the the band back there they they really play into the feel of the lyrics and i mean i think all of us are are obviously we're talking about the music on this a lot but the lyrics are so like they draw you completely in from from the get-go you're listening to the story whatever story he's going to tell you sometimes the story isn't funny and you're just expecting it to be a little bit because some of the songs are really, really funny. And then some of them are really nostalgic and you just get like dragged into it. Like this one here. <laughs> I mean, sure. I feel like you get like, you, you go down and like wonder what's wrong with your life as you're going, <laughs> what, what am I missing out on? You know, like, uh, and I really dig that, that, that way that they arranged the track order, um, on the song on this, on this record. Uh, to take you in and out of that and not just like bury you with nine funny songs, yeah. but, uh, but to, to mix it up and, and bring a, a full story experience. Well, and, and for me, this is the first one where Chris does the, the, the right angle. Uh, and you're talking about the lyrics. The video for this is actually really cool. He, he like asked people to submit pictures and I'm in it holding up the, uh, they might throw a parade and he got a whole bunch of local musicians to actually hold up the words. 
And so maybe it's because I didn't really know Chris that well. I didn't do the square cat uh, open mic that much like a lot of y'all did. And so I met, I met him at Johnny Ping's one day and we just hung out for like two hours talking that, you know, <laughs> and so I wasn't so well versed with his guitar playing live show stuff. When I met him, I was first impressed just by his communication ability. And so this is like his first serious one to me. Cause it's really angsty if you think about it. And it's like, you know, it starts off with that lighthearted whistling and, you know, life's all childlike and all of that. And then you think he's going to side with the kid that gets bullied. But then he kind of just says, you know what, here's a harsh lesson. You know, I never got a participation medal. You know, you ain't special. Life's kind of hard and unfair. And uh, so I, I'm, I'm kind of trying to decide what kid he he's siding with in this song. And I don't think he is. And that's a real cool lyricist thing to do. Uh, you know, plus whistling. You know, any song that begins with whistling is. It's a, <laughs> it's a total thinker, this song. Yeah. You know. Yeah. My favorite line on this one is it's something I'm not required to do. You know, later on I found out that throwing a ball isn't something I'm required to do. <laughs> you know, and he just sums up the whole like childhood is really kind of meaningless when, when you look back on it. So, you know. <laughs> do you have anything to add on this one, Bay? I don't. I, uh, I, <laughs> I remember listening to it and going, oh, that's a nice mandolin. And then I was like, I don't really get it. And then I moved on. That's because you still are a kid. <laughs> All of us old men were like right. sucked into the. <laughs> I mean, I usually check out when anyone ever anyone mentions participation trophies because I fundamentally disagree with the main opinion. So. Uh, you're against participation trophies or for them? I don't think that participation trophies do what people who didn't get them think they do. Mm. Like, I don't think participation trophies make everybody think that they deserve something. It's not like welfare or like how people think welfare is. It's more like, it's inclusionary. You, well, no, it's, here's the thing. As someone who often received participation Portland trophies for her lack of athleticism, it did nothing except made me know the difference between someone pandering to me and me actually earning something. Mm -hmm. So it actually hurts more to get a participation trophy because it's like, Oh, you're too stupid to know you suck. And then mm. you actually do. So. And look, one, one line by Chris Wolf makes us have this deep philosophical and political discussion, you know, and that's a good lyricist. Yeah. Word. Word. Okay. Well, I think we should move on to something way more serious for older people. A okay. physical exam. <laughs> I'm getting older, more concerned about my health. Just like they say, it's more important than your wealth. I'm in my fifties, it's time to be a man. I called the doctor for a physical exam. He checked my nose, he looked inside my ears. Asked if I smoked, if I drank a lot of beers. He checked my lungs. And he listened to my heart. <laughs> it's going great, but then it all fell apart. He stuck his finger in my butt. There it is. <laughs> Feast her up, boy. And I'll tell you what. I would have bet. I wouldn't let some guy stick his finger in my butt. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> so I could hear that a million times and I'll laugh at it every single time. I had to turn that like down four times. Cause every time he said finger up my butt, one of my kids walked through the room <laughs> and I was like, Jesus, why? But like, why does finger up the butt? Like, yeah, you know, I mean, there's been crazier shit at my house that they've seen, <laughs> but it, it just seems so like, Oh no. <laughs> um, I like the, the dissonant chord he does, like, right before it. Oh, my God, Bailey, that's my first thing. You and I are, like, partners. It's the greatest chord ever. It just builds the tension. You're like, huh? It very echoes what the song is about. Yep. Again, something I, I really can't relate to, but... 
<laughs> Noted. <laughs> never had to worry about it. Yeah. And probably never will. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, he, he uses that chord like Bailey just like expertly noticed because that chord is, first off, musically, that chord is probably the dopest thing I've heard all year. It's so 1920. And then when he's talking about the anus penetration or whatever, he does like a slide whistle and it's so juvenile, right? It's like pew, finger. <laughs> <laughs> so whether we can all agree this is probably the most juvenile of them all but it's great for it <laughs> perfect topic uh, i don't once know again, why. once again hearkening back to your youth you know like it's like well you know but from the opposite end it's like uh oh. you know like not <laughs> looking it? forward to growing up looking like yeah i don't uh, i don't think i'd ever thought i'd let that go down <laughs> you know like <laughs> ask ask 22 year old me if that was if something was right about that, and I would probably tell you no, no. Oh my God, I so want to tell my colonoscopy story, but it takes too long. So <laughs> here's the thing: I, how, I, how uh, did you draw out a colonoscopy story so that it is too long? I didn't do it. First off, they drew it out. Like I would have been in and out with the camera, but they were like, "Hey, this is nifty." <laughs> <laughs> So the thing about this uh, is that Chris and I have played in like some of the same events, uh, festivals and stuff. And um, so I, I, I know the song, this song, he's played it for a long time before he recorded it. And so I knew all the words to it and I've heard it a hundred times and I laugh at it every time. And, and uh, the, the thing that I found myself doing was noticing the people in the crowd, wherever it is that he plays it, who haven't heard it before versus the ones who have, and the people who haven't heard it before are looking around waiting, are, are looking around going, what's going on here? And the people who have are looking around at the people who have it waiting for them to get it. Like, and when they start getting it, they both start laughing almost at each other. It's like super vaudeville, right? It's like, you know, you keep waiting for a cane to come drag them off the stage or something. And like, uh, it's just so good. Oh, and my favorite line was, I thought I'd resist a little more. <laughs> just throws that one in there. You know, it's like, I never thought I'd let somebody do this. And I thought I'd resist a little more. <laughs> I like that the entire time, you know exactly where it's going, but you don't know when it's going to hit. <laughs> like, go I'll ahead. <laughs> All right, Chris, just go ahead and say it. All right, we're still not saying it. Just, Just say it. Yeah, it's just like a prostate exam, you know? You never know when that hey moment's going to come, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so true. <laughs> Again, right. cannot relate, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> but literally. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but and going to that enough. real quick, Slimmer, uh, that's like the first Looney Tunes-y kind of track, going with the album cover. I mean, you can almost right. see that music behind like a Bugs Bunny, like Elmer Fudd right. thing, you know? Yeah, yeah, which I guess brings us to Bailey's background, right? The Space Jam. That, that is one hundred percent why I chose Space Jam today. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, all right. So the next track is called "It's a Good Thing You Don't Love Me Anymore." Once upon a time. I went everywhere with you You said you loved me From the day we met And the first night we spent apart You cried the whole night through And it's a good thing You don't love me anymore so long ago and I knew things had to change I understand and I knew the day was coming you'd have to let me go and it's a good thing 
you don't love me anymore. The, the change, change of uh, pace is amazing right there. Um, yeah, I, I would say that this is probably the most uh, profound song that I, like, this is the one that hit me the hardest, just like, with, like, just an interesting angle, like, most breakup songs, it's like one way or the other, or even just a, like, a heck yeah, I hated you too kind of thing. But I found this one very interesting, because it, that line, like, it's a good thing you don't love me anymore. It's such a niche feeling with a breakup. It's like, I would have probably not had the like good sense to end things, but the fact that you did was probably the right decision. Like the very specific in the lyricism. <laughs> the rat, Rocky raccoon agrees. Yeah. Well, apparently it's not meant to speak or Rocky's going to be seen. I was concerned that the head was not attached and Seach was just kind of throwing it on top of it. I'm not some sort of animal savagerist. That one is not a word. I know, I know. <laughs> so, yes, Bailey, but like the, it's go back to the childhood thing with Chris Wolf, right? The song's about a teddy bear. And he's saying, like, you know, it's a good thing you don't love me anymore because you're grown now. And, like... You know, the, the line is, uh, what's the, it's like, all oh, my shirts are all turned and dirty and I've only got one eye. You know, and it's oh, like... You know, it's Toy Story. Yeah, but it's kind of, you know, the Newman thing, right? Yeah. But I just, I don't know. It, it's definitely the bluesiest number. I mean, that's I the think one that, I got that, that, that song is definitely the one that could be in the Toy Story soundtrack for Toy Story yeah. 5. Like, because uh, it is about a teddy bear, but, like, it's about that, in, that internal love that you have. Like, I, you know... Uh, <laughs> opening up the the can of the closet of joe shelton's psyche there's a, a teddy bear called buddy bear up on my shelf that i had from the age of three or something I still have. Too much about joe shelton you know this. um <laughs> he's he's my he's my buddy he's not going anywhere um so you know i don't know i'm 48 i still have my teddy bear this song really touched me <laughs> you know uh this is birthday bear Oh my God, adorbs, <laughs> adorbs. <laughs> oh, birthday bear made an appearance on Moonshine and Music. Yeah, he got put through the wash. His hair used to be very fluffy and now it's kind of curly and kinky. Well, and th this one kind of goes back, not to be too verbose on this one, but I mean, it, it, it goes to that edge that I say Chris has where you know, it, he's almost like that songwriter you, you hate, you know, because like you'll just be cruising along on this wonderful vibe. And then all of a sudden it's like, and Toy Story's dead toy or, you know, the like there, there's a darkness to some of it that has to be there for it to be funny, I think, you know, and you, you get this total rejected teddy bear that did its job. <laughs> was loved or whatever and now it's like but i don't want you to love me anymore it's good that you've forgotten about me it's really sad you know i don't know i cried did you <laughs> no <laughs> but it's too busy playing with inside. the recording inside you cried you know you recognize the cry well but isn't, isn't that the real sorrow you know it's it, you know i mean you know, nobody's like oh my god that britney spears song made me break out into tears but it's that sorrow in the heart you know that chris does anyway word uh, yeah yes word. i feel it word all right let's go to uh as seen on tv we interrupt this program for an important message from our sponsors <laughs> Now available for the very first time, so hurry up, don't delay. One time limited offer, and if you place your order today, we're gonna send you a second one free. Just pay the shipping charge. Be sure to tell the operator what you want, small, medium, or large. Stop, wait a minute, hold on, there's more. This offer's not available in any store. We got an operator standing by, you can only get it on TV. Don't you want to take control of your life? Be a better husband, be a better wife. Don't you think you deserve the very best? Why would you settle for something less? We got a 30-day money-back guarantee. Risk-free trial for you. And if you're not fully satisfied, tell you what we're going to do. Double your money back, back today. Send no money now. 
you could be a proud new owner. We're gonna show you how. 90 days, same as cash, interest free, or three easy payments, no shipping fee. We got operators standing by. You can only get it on TV. I, I, there's no good place to stop. That thing just keeps going. It's amazing. All of the little trickeries of television marketing that he works into one stream of consciousness. I got to just say, I wish I uh, could do that. Uh, we interrupt this broadcast for a special message, like that voice. I wish I could do it like all the time. I would just use it constantly. See? Yeah. We interrupt this program for a special announcement. That, that yeah. voice. Quagmire. It's just Quagmire. <laughs> Well, I would I would use it in like the dumbest situations. Like if someone is driving, like following us, I'd be like, "They're right on our tail, coming around turn three, thirty five miles per hour." Like I I can't do it because I don't sound like a dude. But like if so I I'm did, really, I'm really good at that voice. But I only use it after random like sexual hookups, and I'm like, "That was wonderful. Thank you very much for coming over." <laughs> <laughs> that sounds they terrible they run yeah it's great <laughs> i mean if you're low commitment that's perfect I, you know th this was the one song on the album i could kind of take or leave i mean it was funny and all of that and um you know it was it was it just seemed so quick and it's like you can always tell things that bug an artist you know like their little pet peeves and you can just tell that chris wolf hates advertising <laughs> you know, like, like every time a commercial's on, he's probably like, oh, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Throws the remote at the TV and stuff, right? Yeah. yeah. I knew I should have bought the commercial free package. <laughs> <laughs> he's definitely paying extra for Hulu, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, but, you know, but it's, all, but it's also a great songwriting song because we all hate advertising. I mean, who likes somebody lying to their face on TV? It's like, no money down. It's like, yeah, because you're going to fuck me. Or like, you know, 60 days, same as cash. No, 60 days, and then if I don't pay, I'm in jail. It, you know, like, fuck your, like, smiley lies. <laughs> Zero percent interest for 72 months. Ah, dude. <laughs> But but if you think about it, I mean, personally, as an anarchist, and I don't talk about that much, see how I did that, but it's like, like very little is as evil to me as advertising. I mean, it, it's like debt slavery, like with a mascot, you know, like Bugs Bunny behind Bailey, you know, it's like, hi, finance your fucking soul. And this bunny with the cute fucking like Disney face will, you know, protect you, give you a Porsche. So, I don't know. So that's the weird thing about, uh, being in Muncie is like pretty much every insurance company has bought the rights to Garfield in the surrounding areas. Uh -huh. And so he's just on every advertising billboard and you're like, that seems like a weird mascot for the thing you're selling. Like you're not an Italian restaurant. Yeah. You're not a but, pet but, shop. But I think Schultz, it, it's Schultz, right? That did Garfield. No, that, that no, 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 mm, no, 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 um, Jim Davis. 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 Yeah. He, Garfield's been licensed to the insurance companies. Like since the dawn of Garfield, hasn't he? Yeah. Bunch like I mean, I mean, I you're right yeah yeah so but there's that insidiousness that chris wolf's calling out it's like why is garfield who hates mondays selling me life insurance right <laughs> psychological warfare plink <laughs> we get damn it. propaganda <laughs> anyone else have uh controversial opinions about this two minute song <laughs> It's good. Well, well, the only other thing I'd say about it that's not controversial is it shows Chris Wolf's love of radio because th this is like you could tell as a kid he was all listening to the radio. I mean, you, you can just, it oozes out of him. And, you know, he probably heard all those old timey voices, Bailey. You know, hello, this is the fun hour, you know? <laughs> so. He ain't that fun old. hour. <laughs> He ain't that the old. with Fritz Lang. I, I don't know. Who's Fritz? Didn't he do Metropolis? I'm, I digress. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Up next on the agenda, Summer Rain. Now, I happen to know that this tune, um, Chris runs a uh, little Facebook group called Indie Song G Name Game, where they, they spit out a little uh, phrase and people have to write songs about it. And Summer Rain was one of the topics. And I think this song was written as part of that. So. I don't really have a lot of money. But 
I just paid off my double wide. Never had much time for honey, but I always wished I had one by my side. Lately, there's this girl that's caught my fancy, living in the trailer next to mine. She told me that her name is Nancy. I think she knows, I think she's really fine. And summer rain keeps coming through my window. But it's too hot to keep it closed at night. I know that someday I'll have to find a way to try to keep that window locked up tight. Summer rain. My favorite. That's your favorite? Yeah, because it's so deep and it's so American and it's so storytellerish, right? And so, you know, you got Nancy and a dude that like really wants a honey, but she's dating drunk Stu or whatever his name was. And she's a stripper and her real name's fucking Summer Rain. But then he turns it around and it's like the window is him letting something in, like the notion of having a honey. And so you've got the Summer Rain outside and she's sneaking in because Ed's drunk or with Stu or whatever and there's this bod- body tale going on with with all this shit but it's really about like how many times has he left the window open just so the summer rain can get into his heart a little bit you know and it, it's so well crafted i mean it's just a well crafted song that's based around a cast of characters that we all know in the midwest you know some long tooth stripper chick and you know drunk stew who's just the brawler and uh it, it just it hit me i mean it's a distinctly midwestern song i think good call cool yeah <laughs> good call. i don't even know how i follow that I, what? um if we would just like to list out uh chris wolf jokes that i have not gotten i did not realize <laughs> that summer rain was the name of nancy it's that it was nancy's strip club name yeah. um so i was trying to figure out what letting rain into your house through the window had to do with the crush he had on his neighbor. Uh, and now that makes a lot more sense. Yeah. She's creeping in at night. Yeah. Like a good stripper does. <laughs> Is that what they do? Is that what yeah. strippers are paid for? I didn't know yeah. that. I thought, they were, I, no, I thought it had something off. to do with taking your clothes off. My bad. <laughs> Well, this is in her off hours, honey. I'm, I'm not saying <laughs> I'm not saying dude's paying her. <laughs> yeah, what do you want after a hard day work at the strip club than a dude that ain't passed out? Is what I'm saying. That's like being a chef and coming home, and your neighbor is like, "Hey, do you want to cook for me?" I'll leave either the way, door I, open. Either way, it got me all saucy. This track. <laughs> <laughs> I needed a mint julep. <laughs> I got an audience over here too, but they're being quiet. I don't even know what Brett's got to say about this. What do you got, Brett? You know, I, I really, I, I just like the whole album. You know, like there's not, I don't think I could even break it down to individual songs, you know? It, it really just, especially for somebody now, I, as a profession, I, you know, like I'm not a lyrics guy. I can always appreciate when somebody has that like skill, you know, but to tell you the truth, 90, 99 times out of 100, I'm going to listen to the music the first pass and not even really pay any much mind to what lyrics are going on. That's just my personal nature. I, you know, I run up against that a lot of times with the, you know, when people go, oh, did you listen to this? I was like, yeah, it was great. You know, it's like, well, what did you think? And I was like, I didn't even notice that they said that. I got pointed out the other day, I was uh, doing an interview and, uh, we were talking about lyrics and how I don't tend to pay attention a lot of times to that. And, uh, I, the story I told was playing with David Garza and I think I'd played one of his songs with him maybe four or five times before I realized he was singing in Spanish Uh the whole time, you know, like, Oh, I didn't even catch that. Like, I remember it. I remember literally on stage it dawning on me that like, Oh, that's all Spanish. And uh, he didn't change that tonight from the last five times we've done it. It's just, it's always been that way. I didn't even notice, you know. So, I, like I said, I tend to recognize the, like, skill set that it takes to do that. But I don't, you know, it's like, I didn't 
delve that deep into like what he actually said there. So yeah. I'm almost I'm almost with Bailey there, where it's like, oh, I didn't even catch that. I, I was I, waiting I, I, for Brent Schlemmer to say I, that he is on my side. Yeah. It's been a while, but he got there. <laughs> I, I, can I, forgive, I can forgive a lot musically. Like as long as somebody's doing them musically, I'm all about it. It's like that's cool. That's what right. you're feeling and all that. But when, like I used to not be a lyrics guy, but like lyrics have to be really good for me right. to really like like talk about them because you know we got so much oh baby babies and you know whatever justin <laughs> beaver songs so that's why this this for me is a lyric album i mean the music's stellar but everything there's so many weavings in his look what i'm doing bailey you see this mm-hmm. i'm very space impressive jamming. i'm space jamming okay. <laughs> um <laughs> Are you saying that you do not approve of Justin Bieber's uh, song, Yummy, being number one on the Billboard Top Hits? You know, Bailey Sheldon, I don't know, because every time I've said anything to you, you've come at me like a hyena. <laughs> hey! <laughs> so I'm just going to let you say your shit. You said you were here to mess with me. I'm just <laughs> fighting you back have? preemptively. <laughs> oh, okay. Preemptively. She's, mock her and she's like mocked you the whole time. Man. I know. Okay. So what's your stripper name, Brent Schlemmer? It's uh Brent Schlemmer. I don't <laughs> I bet they tip well for that. <laughs> and on table three. <laughs> this is what a Hoosier feminist looks like. Is that what it Joe says Shelton, on your shirt? Joe Shelton. Joe Shelton. What? Joe Shelton. Did I ever tell you about the gig where I stripped? No. In a birdcage at a truck stop? I'll tell you that one sometime. <laughs> he gets so excited, he's shaking. I so, made more money stripping in the birdcage than I did for the blues music I played. Wow, that's pretty impressive. <laughs> so um, the next song on this uh, album is an absolute masterpiece. It is a masterwork. Um, it is uh, genius. It's one of the best comedy songs I've ever heard. Not just by Chris Wolf, but by anybody. Windowless van. Well, gather round me, children. I got a tale to tell. Gather round me closely so you can hear me well. You only get one childhood. Enjoy it while you can. And try to stay away from the man in the windowless van. Now he might have a puppy or a great big candy bar. He might offer you a ride so you don't have to walk too far. He might say he's a dear old friend of your mom and dad. You might think he's a real nice guy, but he's not. He's bad. He's the bad, bad man in the windowless van, hanging out at the park. Better beware if you can, especially after dark. You could be nice to everyone you meet. I really think you should. But the bad, bad man in the windowless van, he's up to no good. That is genius. That's so what I saw. dark. It's so right? dark. <laughs> yeah, like the turn in Sesame Street just went straight down an alley. Like. <laughs> <laughs> now we're on Poppy Cock Street. <laughs> break away from the man in the window's van is all I got to say. Wow. I mean, if you, oh, I mean <laughs> if you are a child and you hear that song, you should run when you see a windowless van. Like, <laughs> It's not even. Well, but he sells it like a like a like a after school special. You know, it's like this is a lesson, boys and girls. And he even says, "Follow the bouncing ball." You know, like like it's an old schoolhouse rock episode about the creeper. It's so dark. I'm not going to talk about this one. So it also kind of reminds me of uh, when I was a kid in uh, elementary school. 
We had the annual fire sta- safety program come to town. Uh, and I had a CD for a number of years. I think we only got rid of it when we moved to the house we live in now. So like three years ago. Uh, and it was, it was an entire CD called uh, Fire Safety Rap. Uh, oh with, with the hit single, uh, Be Cool About Fire Safety. Um, <laughs> say milk. Awkward Did silence that Bailey actually work? walked out to that CD. You haven't, you haven't burned cool about no. fire safety. Uh, you know? Square. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody made some a di- bunch of money writing that. Somebody <laughs> made a bunch of money putting yeah. that together. Some corporate guy in an office with a six track made that mm-hmm. <laughs> on a cassette and made many thousand dollars. Mm-hmm. I think it was he got, that, by, he got uh, that government contract, Schlemmer. He got that city school government contract, baby. Yeah, it's I think it was written by Jason Bateman during the filming of Juno. When he, was, <laughs> he was trying to get in character, and he wrote that song. Uh, well, you know, we talked safety. about Tom Waits and uh, Newman and all that, but here's another one that this one really reminds me of. How many of us as kids like had the 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 two disc Burl Ives CD? Sure. <laughs> right you know the yeah. christmas songs but also like he had like just like the song about giants and shit right yeah yeah and that that one really reminded me of a burl ives song <laughs> creepy <laughs> but just so i mean the thing is it's really dark really dark humor really serious on another tone and then all of the ways that you're sucked completely and totally into it i don't know how many times i've seen people laugh at that one but like, for me, it's just it's just the gold standard of that of that kind of comedy, right? Yeah. I mean, it's just right there, you know. And, uh, it, and it's the it's the nervous laughter, you know. It, it, <laughs> right. You laugh. It's like when you're laughing at somebody that just slipped on a ice. You're like, ah, that probably hurt, you know. <laughs> now get up, please. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. All right, next in the pile, uh, over here on the on the in the record, we've got the diner. Probably my second favorite. Yeah, it's great. She loses track She can't remember when She started working at Harry's Diner Seems she's always been And when she adds it up That's when it all sinks in See, she was 17 He was 23 He said, don't you worry, baby Count on me, and I'll do the right thing. We'll be a family. He couldn't hold down a job. He's out drinking every night. When he did come home, he'd always start a fight. So when he left for good, she thought everything would be all right. job came in handy because jobs were hard to find and if you're a single mom uh. they know you're the working kind she raised her boy in that corner booth and harry he didn't mind so wonderful such a wonderful song <laughs> it's the only one i think that really feels like a movie you know like a lot that's the one where you you literally see the you know there's other stuff you get the scene but it's just the scene where this has got a nice progression of a movie in your head like uh-huh. you're reading story you're reading that story the story song you know like it really evokes a movie to me like you're gonna yeah you or or at the very least you know like a like you said the after school special you know it's like oh here's the situation and and it's playing out in in a way that you you've seen a million times or whatever, but you it's like just um, 
sung in a very, like we've always, like we've said over and over, a very masterful way of like expressing that, you know, whether it's yeah. just the, the content, you know, or, or the, the concept of like this one, this one, this one, this one, this scene, this scene, this scene, or the string of this, the, the full story being played out in one big lyrical way. Yeah, masterful. Yeah, and I'm going to take back what I said earlier. This one's probably my favorite. I mean, it's just so wonderful. And my favorite line is, if you're a single mom, they know you're the working kind, you know. And there's just so much America and so much Midwest in this, you know. And the the, the humdinger at the end, which I don't want to be a spoiler or whatever, but, like, this is the Chris Wolf I want to talk to, like, in a shitty bar at 2 a.m. next to a cornfield, you know. And I just want him to tell me a story about some girl he knew or – you know, some dude that worked at the factory. Uh, yeah. So. Uh, yeah, I like this one. Um, it reminds me of the plot of Waitress, which is a musical, uh, but it's told in a very, very different style. Um, so that's kind of what I liked about it is there's, there's so many different ways to sell the same story. And I think that this one's a really unique way of doing it. Well, and, and you know, the, the American con, you know, that like, you know, Chris Wolf is all about America, you can tell, but like in this one, he's actually being very, like, he's condemning America in a way, you know, because here's this guy that lies to the girl about starting the family, and here's this kid who's going to take care of his single mom by joining the service, and, you know, all, like, there's there's all this American con, you know, if you just work hard, or if you just do it this way, or if you're a patriot, you go off to foreign lands, everything's going to be good. And it's just really wonderful. It's just a wonderful song. Well, I, I, I think that what you're touching on there is really the thematics of this entire record, right? Mm -hmm. Which is, you know, uh, things aren't always as they seem. Things are sold to us to be all bright and shiny. And sometimes they're really not. And a lot of the time, they're really not. And, mm -hmm. um, and, and if we didn't laugh, we would be crying constantly. And that's yeah. kind of the whole thing that I get out of, uh, of the record in general. And, um, and that's a, uh, it's, it's quite a commentary while not being come out front with that commentary really at all. Like yeah. not just sticking it in your face and going, you know, uh, 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 these are all the things I hate and going, you know, or being negative. It's like, um, it's not a negative tone it's a it's a positive and hopeful tone somewhere under there um that things uh that we experience in life don't have to be as hard as they are sometimes it's because we're sold this bill of goods and we're let down well you know? said yeah well and, said man um, and i i think that's what's marvelous about this song and what's marvelous about the whole tone of all the songs as they fit together in the big story that you know he's calling but seriously folk um, but which I would call, you know, American life. And that's why I love it. Yeah. Um, so, uh, next, next track, as we're getting toward the end here, it's called OG. <laughs> well, growing up, my best friend's name was G. He grew up in that house next door to me. They told me Jesus was his Christian name, but to me it was all the same. He was G to his friends and family. And me and G, we hung out in the street. We was wearing robes, had sandals on our feet. His folks were really nice, that Joe and Mary Christ. They were always so sweet. Me and G, we was thick as thieves. He always had something up his sleeve. I remember that one time he turned water into wine. I got so drunk I could barely see. Oh, G. Oh, G. Where in the hell can you be? <laughs> it's been a while since he left town. I bet he's hanging around, and I hear he's coming back again. We'll see. Yeah. 
I think that's my favorite spring solo ever. <laughs> a solo with a spring or something. Joe's heart. <laughs> Joe's heart. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what it is. Yes. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean, it goes so well with the tune, which is very, very uh, probably offensive to a lot of Christians. Uh, but, <laughs> but the uh, the uh, the spring. Um, <laughs> the spring solo what jello harp is that what you called it Tongue harp. Joe. what do jaw. you call it jaws harp jaws harp hmm. or jews harp i believe is the og not quite so politically correct <laughs> term i don't know um, i was really trying to figure out if that was intentional like calling him the og and then i was like well that line like we would play out in the streets i was like this is a weird dichotomy that's yeah, like boys in the hood with jesus christ yeah but it's definitely like a folk song yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah i mean what, what would a folk album be without a little bit of christianity right in america fair enough but what would a folk album be without any sort of reference to like street living and like gangsters and stuff well and like hanging with the long hair. hairs what, yeah. what a cool line like g yeah. used to hang with the long hairs <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> is that what you wrote down for your favorite line from the song no nope, no nope. my favorite line was uh when he turned water into wine it was as drunk as i've ever been <laughs> yeah, i like that because it's super cool line. because you, you could think that the drunkness is like a, a love of God or he, he could just be schnockered off a of wine by Jesus. <laughs> Either way, it yeah. works. I like the, I like that line because, you know, I, I'm picturing like the, 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 the narrator of the song, not necessarily being Chris, but being this dude who's like just a normal dude. And he's like, oh shit, free wine. <laughs> <laughs> You know? And we all know that there's no poor people on the other side of town that love free wine, right? right. I'm sorry, Bailey, like, tell me how horrible like, a person I am. Free wine, I'm all over this. I Bring can't think on, of a know? single thing to make fun of you for right now. So, uh, Joe Shelton, I actually had a different take. I had that this was set like in the time of Jesus. And so it was like Jesus's buddy, but they were playing in the right. streets of like Nazareth or whatever. You know, it was like, <laughs> what's up, G? <laughs> <laughs> that's that's all. Also, what I thought, to be honest. I go. mean, that that works too. I was just, you know, um. <laughs> can't you see Jesus like shooting hoops and like graffiti in the fucking uh, Pontius Pilate's house or whatever? Right. <laughs> <laughs> and then bad shit happens to him. Uh, um, to, to yeah, him. hanging around, right? <laughs> we used to hang around. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely a different take on the whole, uh, uh, <laughs> as I said, creation, man. not, wow. not sure it isn't blasphemous, but I, I do love it. <laughs> well, he's, he even says running around with the girls that walk the streets at night, you know, talking about like Mary Magdalene or whatever. Yeah. You know, how Jesus people. was like friends with hookers. Yeah. So, I mean, there, there's a lot going on there. Chris Wolf, Bailey Shelton, space jam. Space jam. <laughs> All right. The last tune on the record. Let's, uh, let's give her a listen. Ukulele Blues. I got this little ukulele for you. You never 
never really talked all that much and and all we did was hang out at the bar. So um yeah. I, I, I picture Brent Slimmer with his ukulele bass playing behind. <laughs> All right. He, should, he missed an opportunity, that. Brent. He should have yeah. had you there. Well, Chris missed the opportunity. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> call, call, call a bass player once in a while. <laughs> I think I think this is the song that Slimmer and I are gonna fucking vibe on the most, though, man. Because oh, this is so early, Blind Lemon, like John Lee Hooker blues delta, and you can just see Chris Wolf listening to the old blues guys from like the nineteen tens. Anyway, seventy eight got a seventy eight like yeah, right. Uh -huh. Like it? No, it totally does sound like he's got that uh, that feel just simply from the from the get go, where it's like. You could tell he felt like, oh, there's there needs to be something going on here other than me just like strumming these straight up rhythmic blues chords. And so he's like, here they come, here it comes, keep watch yeah. out, you know, like. And the old blues guys did that too, you know, like they had to That's what I'm saying. Throw, throw a little vocalization in there just to kind of mix it up so you didn't. And but to make the song just a little bit longer, you know, it's like, oh, I want to play. I'm going to play through the full 12 bar four times at the beginning before I start singing. But the second time around, I better throw something in there just so you, you, you're you still listening. Yeah. Oh, wait. Here it comes. Here comes the – oh, I got the blue – well, I see them. Here they come. It's, it's like those old blues records, you know, where it's literally just dude with the guitar that looks like it fell off the back of a fucking truck. And, like, you know, it's like the, the music that the Beatles and the Stones, like, discovered, quote, unquote, like 50 years after the fact, you know. It's, it, but I also got, like, a Captain Beefheart vibe on this. It was it was almost not. Right. Yeah. Right. It's like, yeah, like, hey, we got our brown brothers. <laughs> yep. That's I, all I got. The thing I really dig about this – blues tune is i mean it isn't truly a blues tune if you sing real lyrics before the one minute mark i mean mm. you know you, you can you can have an aside or something to start it off or an introduction but you can't really get into the story until you've played a full minute of the blues before <laughs> right. you start <laughs> full you know, establishment what, what about the line, though, like, i got the blues so bad i can't even use my guitar I mean, he, yeah. so he, he's so down, he's playing a fucking you. Well, I thought he was saying the opposite, though. I yeah, thought yeah, he was saying... Not, it isn't yeah. bad enough to grab a guitar. Yeah, yeah oh. that's, that's the tongue-in-cheek part. That's the part that I liked about it, was the idea is like, yeah, I got the blues for you, baby, but like, not enough to grab my guitar. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I had it flipped. Yeah, yeah, yeah like, work a little harder and you'll upgrade to an actual blues song there you go yeah, i only got four strings worth of blues for you honey. <laughs> you're not quite worth six strings and okay. definitely not the 12 string blues right like, yeah yeah <laughs> yeah but, but go and, and again my last one on this because i know we're probably short on time already but it's like you know like if you're gonna have a folk song with like americana and like all of these elements we've been talking about, man, this is kind of like his nod to the old blues, you know, uh, traditions in fucking America. It's like, you know, all the other songs were these really cool finger picky kind of forties, you know, boom, chicka, bing, chicka, dee, sort of stuff. And this one is just like, but if you want folk music, go back to Johnson, you know, go back to lemon. So. Yeah, I agree. I think that's exactly the, the tone at the end here is uh is to to just finish up the record with a like a little transition into uh um you know the sadness of the whole message of the record right and and to, and to take that there and you know it's almost like another commentary not just inside this song but a commentary on all these other things to say i got the blues but not good enough to pull out a guitar for the you know not not just a commentary on what's going on in that st song but what's going on in general as as a commentary for the whole record yeah, um, so we started with poop on the moon, and we ended with a chick that wasn't good enough for a six string. <laughs> and I mean, and everything in between. Good <laughs> <laughs> to you. <laughs> I mean, man, I've been through the ringer. After you get on this record, you're just like, wow, what what haven't we touched on? Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, well, you know, and, and Chris Wolf is one of those guys that, like, legit, if you don't really dive into his stuff. 
you know, you could listen to this on the background and you, you know, you'd be thinking, Oh, there's another folk song or something, but that's, that's his, his magic. You know, we're sitting here and we're, we're dissecting these tunes and I haven't really, you know, I'm not a folk guy, you know, that Sheldon, you know, like, you know, save me from dude with a guitar kind of a thing, you know, because very few people do it. Well, you're one of them, you know, Brit Schlemmer's one of them too. And it's like, if it's done right, it's magic. And that's why this album's magic. Boom. Boom. The end. Boom. Boom. Bam. <laughs> as, as, you, as Leach would say, bam. Wow. <laughs> that's all, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, you know, uh, the, wrapping it up here, uh, but seriously, folk is available on all the streaming platforms. Go and stream the shit out of this record, um, and 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 send find Chris Wolf on social media. Follow that dude. Watching his fo- social media feed is also very fun. He has the best open stage, and I run one in this town. He has the best open stage in this town that he runs at a place called Square Cat Vinyl, which is unfortunately due to coronavirus not having live performances right now. But uh, when that opens back up, if you are a player of any type and want to go play at an open stage that is the coolest in the world, go to the Square Cat Vinyl in downtown Indianapolis, the Fountain Square, and uh, check out the Square Cat open mic where Chris Wolf is the host. I guarantee you'll have a good time. I guarantee you'll see 30 people that are all songwriters because he allows no cover songs in his open stage. 30 people singing really good original music and they all come there because Chris Wolf is the man. He is the guy who puts it all together and gets all of us excited about music and has us all come in there. And um, I, I, I tremendously uh, appreciate what he has done for our music scene by having that because I met so many different people at that stage. So many different people have become friends. So many different people who I've heard their music a lot of them have been guests on Moonshine and Music, and um, and that's a that's a big thing for us musicians and the whole Indianapolis music scene. But this record is fantastic. Go listen to it, and uh, I guess that's what I got. What do you guys got to go out with? Who have we been talking about this whole time, by the way? Yeah, who What's is this guy? guy? I never heard of him. Chris Wolf. Never heard of him. Never hear of him. Chris. Who? Hold on. Hey. Hold on. Wow, Bailey just slammed us. Anybody else got anything yeah. to add? I, I think we killed it. <laughs> we killed it. We're out on Chris Wolf. So we'll see you next time on Moonshine and Music. Moonshine and Music is a presentation of Not Less Entertainment. Copyright 2020. All rights reserved. The producer for today's show was Joe Shelton. Our cameraman grip and stunt double was Brent Lee Smith. On cameras and all sorts of other things, Bailey Shelton. And our staff guru is Brent Schlemmer. Join us each Sunday for new episodes right here with Moonshine and Music.